Ачала! What's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here. All right, guys, time for the Warhammer part of Double Feature Friday. This is something I probably should have waited for, for Spooky Month, you know, but, you know, this just is just... You know, I just couldn't, because this just looked too damn interesting. I wanted to know what he had to say. This is five horrifying moments in Warhammer 40k lore, and this is my major kill. I like his stuff. Anyway, so let's see what he's got for us, and... Go. Today we'll go over five moments, characters, themes, or whatever, from Warhammer 40k that inspires genuine horror. They're going to be more than five, I would think. a horror book or story. Let's get into it. The first That's a horrifying cool intro, I like list it. involves Knock spiders. Of I'm course it does. Spiders, as I'm sure many of you are also not. So this one hits home a bit harder. In the Beckwin Saga, which is the third trilogy for the Inquisition series, we follow the perspective of a blank clone of Elizabeth Beckwin, Eisenhorn's old companion. She's in an elite society that claims it's a training ground for Inquisitors, but it's actually the opposite. As such, we gather a lot of things are wrong. Clues here and there that point towards there being a sinister force behind the entire society. Then there is the super creepy way some society members' voices crackle when they talk. It's uncovered that the people with the crackly voices have pretty overpowered abilities that allow them to project okay. powerful forms of energy to destroy their enemies. Hey, that's pretty cool. Kind of like Dragon Ball Z. Until we discover no. the source of those powers. See, the society would clone a blank, train that clone, and then once they were ready, shove a big magic spider down their throat that would live inside their body. Yeah. With the crackling voice being the reverb of the lungs against the spider within them. Yeah. We find this out as an Empress Children's Psyker kills one of the society members by forcefully extracting the spider and crushing it. The yeah. clone of Beckwood Damn. obviously feels pretty sick seeing That's nasty. As the society intended to put a spider in her as well before shit went down and her true adventure began. The horror element here is the build-up. We know something is wrong. We know there is something sinister going on, and we think we might be just starting to figure it out. Then BAM! Fucking eight-legged freak and out of nowhere! And also spiders! Even before one of you retards eats a spider so you can try become Goku. The next <laughs> ones are a bit of a two-sided coin. On one side, we have Trezini Infinite, acting like an immortal Ash Ketchum, exploring the galaxy, kidnapping people for a laugh, and just having an all-round good time. Then on the other side, we have legions of soulless undead robots that want to exterminate your balls or, you know, flay off Dude. your flesh and use it as a cloak. Because this coin contrasts so hard with itself, there is a debate about what type of Necrons people prefer. I reckon both are good in their own way and both have their place. The more horrifying Necrons are obviously the ones more applicable to today's video, hence the next scary moment was ironically okay. in one of the Kane novels. Novels known for being a bit more lighthearted and funny. When Kane is exploring an ice tunnel, they keep getting ambushed by these big scary insectoid things. Not ideal, but the real horror Gross. is when they accidentally stumble into a Necron tomb. These Necrons aren't messing about. They have flayed ones and even the incredibly rare Pariahs, which is a blank merged with a Necron chassis to create an extremely scary enemy. Like, their superpower is the fact that they are so scary. Kane realizes he has really? to try to shut down the Necron portal that keeps teleporting enemies in, so he recruits an elite squad of stormtroopers to help him. These guys are hard as nails. They have no fear of death at all. Like when one of them dies, the rest just kind of shrug and pour out a cold one for them. On their way to the tomb, Jeez. they fight some Necrons. No biggie. Then flayed ones attack, killing some of them and stealing their flesh. Still, no biggie. However, when okay. this elite squad is face to face with the pariahs, they all freeze in fear. Even Kane can't move as the terror of being in their presence turns his legs to stone. He is only saved because Jürgen's blankness somehow blocks their blankness. It doesn't make much sense and probably I... wouldn't fit into the current canon too well, but there you go. Kane escapes, but these fearless stormtroopers spend their last moments screaming, praying, pissing themselves and crying as they are torn to shreds by the Necrons. It was cool to see the Necrons in all their horrifying glory, since the last time I'd read about them was the significantly more light-hearted Infinite and Divine novel. This next one is sad, okay. unnerving, and quite horrifying. The short story, The Strange Demise of Titus Endor. Endor and the legendary Eisenhorn used to be best Endor, friends, really? as they were both trained by the same Inquisitor at the same time. Endor was quite the handsome, charming go-getter, whilst Eisenhorn was yeah. the reserved, quiet achiever. 
Their Inquisitor Master was infected with cerebral worms, which is basically Warhammer's very grimdark version of Alzheimer's. Okay, worms that's your brain disturbing as hell. System, eating away at your brain matter, causing your memories to merge and distort until eventually they eat your way out of you as you oh, die. Oh, jeez. You can literally see the that worms dancing up. behind someone's eyes if they have it. Oh, that, that is fucked up. They by their master's side until the end, at which point they both went off to have successful careers. Eventually, Endor fucks up and ruins his career and friendship with Eisenhorn, going off by oh, himself of to do lower grade Inquisitor work. This is where the short story begins. His current assignment is going after a target in a city, trying to find clues as to his whereabouts. The way the story is written okay. is quite jarring, with sections seemingly missing, almost as if there's gaps in Endor's memory, as well as Endor himself having a strange and borderline senile thought process. He doesn't know where his assistant Inquisitor is. He acts stalkerish and creepy to a girl he meets as he tricks himself into thinking she is a clue into finding his target. It just kind of gets oh, more and more fragmented worms. as the story goes on. He often thinks about an experience he had younger in life where he survived an attack by an alien beast. However, the legend goes that eventually that beast will return, no matter where he goes, to finish him off. Eventually, his assistant Inquisitor arrives after being spam called by Endor and he cracks the shit telling Endor to stop bothering him as he is now a full Inquisitor and Endor hasn't been one for years. This oh. and confuses Endor, but he doesn't let it get him down. He continues his investigation, which by this point has all blended into a confusing mess. Sometime later, while he is watching a play as part of his investigation, his assistant Inquisitor arrives and starts apologizing to Endor, saying he had tests run on him and that they found cerebral worms in Endor's brain. Yep, there you go. He says he wishes he was there for him and can make him comfortable in his last few months. Endor brushes this off as he is too busy with his investigation. The assistant Inquisitor, who turns out to have been a full Inquisitor for years after being promoted <laughs> by Endor, himself oh, leaves. Endor then realizes he is totally alone in the opera house before he sees the monster of his past approach and puts him out of his misery. Obviously the monster was just a metaphor and hallucination for the worms who finally ate their way out of his brain. Oh, killing him. The investigation he had been running had been solved years ago with fragments of it merging with his current memory creating false clues and false leads. It was a creepy, sad story to read, leaving you feel deflated. That's not so much horror as, as it's it disturbing. Of Endor as a man who had so much potential. It's like Shutter and Island, you know. Have you ever seen that movie? Shit, and he died a horrible death. It's theorized that by Eisenhorn and Endor being so close to their master as the worms took him, that is what infected Endor. The fact that he was paranoid about a Xeno monster hunting him the whole time helped tick this into the element of horror. Not to mention, when someone has cerebral worms, you can see them swimming around in their eyes. Ugh, Cosmic God. horror is uh. tough one to write about. It's also kind of tough to describe. A lot yeah. of people think of the warp or that the Tyranids are cosmic horror, and they no. kind of are, but not no, they're not. They don't even come kind of close, man. No. Way. The Chaos Gods have pages of lore detailing their past, present, and even future. The Tyranids are also understandable, with the hive mind having been witnessed and even wounded by various events within the galaxy. But to say really? that Warhammer 40k doesn't even have wounded it. horror would be like saying transgender athletes don't have a physical advantage over people born as female. It's oh. just incorrect. I'm Maybe not touching that. I'm not touching that one. CP like entities on them, whilst the Halo Stars are a thing. The Halo yeah. Stars, for those that don't know, are a terrifying section on the border of known space. The Necron Empire within it went insane and all became flayed ones. The worlds within them are impossible to exterminate us, and the Tyranid High Fleet that threw through it developed a lot of problems. Flu. The best part is yeah. that Chaos doesn't even have a purchase there. Nope. It isn't a Chaos Realm. It's a Lovecraftian section of space where things that even the Chaos Gods fear reside. The galaxy has almost been destroyed by the horror of the Halo Stars, so definitely not one to fuck around with. Yeah. Another bit of cosmic horror is the Well of Eternity. There's something over there just watching, the that waiting. Even Snitch is too scared to get for everybody to screw up. Instead, the God of Change, arguably the most powerful being in existence, has been steadily throwing greater demons into it to see what happens. <laughs> Only Kairos family that was eh. ever able to emerge. Now with severe retardation, <laughs> and the ability to see the past and future simultaneously. Oh my God. As you can imagine, he doesn't make for very good company. I love this shit. Stuff that the gods of chaos and even the Tyranid hive mind know very little about. And are afraid so of. many possibilities. Is there another realm where the old gods of the universe reside, locked away but leaking their influence into real space? 
Is this what the Rundung were? A race so powerful due to their cosmic horror that the Emperor had to let the Void Dragon fight them like a fucking legendary Pokemon. <laughs> I like that knowing everything, and I like there being room to let my imagination run wild in the most horrifying of ways. And finally, speaking of the Halo Stars, we have the Halo Devices. These Xeno Devices found by Rogue Halo Tales devices, and Halo really? Stars seem cool, giving you immortality and superpowers. Not bad. Until we get to the side effects, and boy are there some fucking yeah, side effects. Yeah, I remember this. Sure, the first little while using it is good, your body is purged of all imperfections and impurities, and you can even regrow lost limbs. This is the honeymoon stage, as the device <laughs> sinks into your flesh and becomes one with you. However, after only a couple of years, your mind will begin to break, your body will distort, and you'll gain a hunger for flesh. After a few decades, you will have become a literal Xeno, and not in like a cutesy elder way. You'll be a walking no. abomination who is never oh, possible geez. to kill. It's unclear if the Xenos who made the Halo devices were total fucking assholes, or it's simply <laughs> just not very compatible with humans. Regardless, yeah, probably both. these devices are horrifying. The artwork of someone who uses them is scary, and I really don't know why people use them. You get like a year of feeling good until you become a monster. Really shit deal in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, like, only good after point. Only a couple decades of using it, you're completely gonzo. Horror within 40k is something I vibe with hard. There are plenty more elements of it, so if this video does well, then we'll do more. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then... Okay, so... Had to cut out his... Promoting his shmentai on his patron. You want to hear about that? Click on the link to the original and go check it out. Anyway, though I do hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, also, don't forget to like the original and subscribe to Major Kill if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to me before you guys go. And I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.